my name is Miss Catron. I am a second grade teacher here at Hamilton Elementary School and today I'm going to be showing you some strategies to use when it comes to understanding place value. We will be working on 2.mbt.a.2 understanding place value and I'll read Flynn adds 137 and 345. This is the first step in his work. 137 equals 100 plus 30 plus 7. 345 equals 300 plus 40 plus 5. And what I understand from this first part of the problem is that Flynn he is going to be adding some numbers and the numbers that he is at that he will be adding are 137 and the number 345. So this is the work that he has done. So Flynn has basically annotated his work um, by using the expanded form of solving um, place values. And so in his annotation, his notes are 137 can be broken down to 100, 3 tens, and 7 ones. Here, the same thing. Flynn understands that 345 is broken down in expanded form to 3 hundreds, 4 tens, and 5 ones. This problem involves two parts. All parts must be solved in order to master this one standard. Part A says that we must fill in the box to complete the next step in Flynn's work. So here is Flynn's work again. He has taken his numbers here uh, in the expanded form version and wrote them down in the correct place value. Here are his ones, tens, and hundreds. He has added seven plus five. And I know that we can put seven in our head, take that highest number, put it in our brain and count on. So this is seven and we're adding five more. And we can just put some circles here if that would be helpful. But seven, and then we'll add five. One, two, three, four, five. Seven plus five is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'm annotating here and I have the number 12 because seven plus five equals 12. But I know and Flynn understands that you cannot just put the number 12 here in this one's place <clears throat> because we are also adding tens and hundreds. Therefore, Flynn has brought the one number that's in the one's place, this number two. He has taken that number and put it underneath the one's column here. This one that's in the tens place it's not shown, but it's understood that he's adding one more because you, you have to add that 110. On this side, we see that he has correctly put his numbers in the hundreds column in the correct order, and he has added zeros, the ones, and here he understands that one plus three equals four. So in order for us to fill in the box, to complete the next step in Flynn's work, we need to understand that an answer must go here. So, seven plus five, we understand is 12. We put our one in the one's place and we carry over that 110. Four plus three would give us seven. Seven plus one more number would give us eight. So, the answer here would be 80 because we must also keep that, the, the, the zeros here. Okay, since it's in expanded form. Now, this takes care of part A. We must also solve for, for B. B says, what is 137 plus 345? Well, we already have the answer here, but we must put it in its standard form without the extra zeros, okay? So we have two ones, we have eight tens and we have four hundreds. So our new number or the answer to the problem is 482. This is how you solve two problems that are uh, step A and B 
in understanding the computations of place value. I'll do one more uh, example, and this is also under the same standard. However, this one is asking us to solve the problem, but without any extra notes or annotations. But we can also make our own. It says, what is 54 plus 9 plus 50? Well, on this problem, we have three different numbers that we're adding. And the best strategy that we can use is to take the first two numbers and add them. And then we can come back and add that last digit, okay? So let's first begin by taking the number 54, and we're going to put the nine in vertical form. So 54 plus, make sure your plus sign does not fall underneath, <clears throat> excuse me, the place values here. And then the, we, only, we only have one nine, so I'm going to put that in the ones place. So we can begin adding, but remember, we're only adding the first two numbers, that 54 plus nine. Nine, uh, we can also make a 10, okay? So if we're making a 10, nine plus one more would give us 10. And I know that there are four ones here, okay? So if we mark out one of those ones uh, here at the top, this four is no longer four, but it's three. And now our new number here is 10. So what is 10 plus three more? Well, 10, put that number in our head and count on. 10, 11, 12, 13. That's just one strategy you can use of making 10s to solve this problem. So since 10 plus three is 13, that means nine plus four is also 13. We have to do the same thing we did here because we're adding not just the ones, but we have tens, a number in the tens place. So we cannot just write our answer here in, as 13. We must use the number in the ones place and put it here underneath the ones column. Go here at the top and carry one 10 because we need to make sure we're not forgetting about that one 10 in the number 13. 1 plus 5 equals 6. I know that because I can put 1 in my head. I'm sorry, 5, the largest number in my head, and count up 1, and that will give us 6. We are still not done with this problem because we know that 54 plus 9 is 63. However, we must add 50. We can keep the problem like this, or we can come and start a whole new problem at underneath it. Just give yourself some space, okay? So 63 is this number because we need to know what 54 plus 9 equals, and then we're just going to add again another digit, and that's the number 50, and I'm getting that from the problem. 3 plus 0 is the number 3, and 6 plus 5 would give us 11, and I know that because I can put 6 in my head, and then count up five places. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now I can write the total number of 11 underneath because I'm not adding another digit in the hundreds place. So the answer to our problem, I'm going to look at my choices. My choices are 98, 113, 143, 164, I can easily see that my answer matches one of the answer choices and that's the one I will select.